Somewhere late in August 2018, we started the engine of our double-decker RV to go and visit the German village of Enkirch in the beautiful valley of the river Moselle. For Willy's Fernreisemobil treffen. Fern means far away and a Reisemobil is a traveling vehicle. So basically it is the gathering for traveling vehicles for long distance trips. And because some people could make a long trip with, let's say, a lawnmower, this means anyone is invited. So, no wonder that this is one of the biggest of these gatherings. Everything is here, from the very big to the quite small, from the unusual to the more common, and from the new to the very old. Here a short impression what to expect in this video. Remarkable vehicles with their wheels, steps, slides and signs. After a while I recognize some kind of common denominator. Apparently most people think that if you really want to travel long distance, at some point you're forced to go off-road. Which even goes for beetles. And off-road means not just wheels, but big wheels or even bigger wheels. And if one of them blows, where the hell in Ouagadougou will you find another one like it? So when you have these big wheels, you're kind of forced to take a spare with you. Of course, for long trips, one spare is not enough. So you work your wheels, you test your wheels and you sell your wheel, a uh, tire. Then, funny enough, you meet this guy, who proves that you don't need no big wheels. He traveled 195 countries, almost all in the world. And with what? This old VW van. Those big wheels they come with a disadvantage. You need steps to get into your vehicle. The bigger the wheels, the bigger the steps. First there are the small and simple steps, then there are the steps that were bought in the store, then you have steep steps and not so steep steps, electric sliding or folding out steps, steps that continue inside, color matching steps, eye catching steps, a bit too short steps and if you have two tents on top of your car you even might need two ladders. If you want to get onto the roof of your truck, you need a long ladder. And of all the bigger vehicles I saw only one that has only one step in. This double decker. Oh wait, that's mine. Ah. By the way, if you want to visit Enkirch, you should. The village is nice to see with its narrow streets and the beautiful houses. There are not that many shops, so don't expect to go shopping. But there is a museum. Another sightseeing tip would be to take the little ferry to the other side of the river Moselle, where you can take the train to Traben Trabrach. That's nice too. The grapes are growing in the main street and it's a bit bigger than uh, Enkirch, so there you can go shopping. But let's get back to the many extraordinary motorhomes in Enkirch. That very special event with about uh, 800 to 1000 vehicles that stretches over more than one kilometer of river shore. Now let's start with the basics. You start with a truck and then you go looking for a box that fits. And that looks like this. Or this. And even more examples of boxes, where you can see that sometimes they are starting to lose the 100% square shape. The quick and dirty method is taking a caravan as a box. And then some trucks look more like tractors. Here more tractor-like models. And so we slide into the even more exceptional vehicles. What to think of this old truck for instance? Or this one, that is so square it resembles a 
an apartment building. Or this one. Would you believe this is a Volkswagen van? In America more common, but very rare over here are these fifth wheel vehicles. Doesn't it look like art? This truck with a more traditional living room in the back? And if you thought that this little car is out of place here, you are wrong. For it's a motorhome. The owner managed to squeeze in a full size single bed. The more traditional RVs have slide outs. But if you build something yourself, you might want to give it a slide or fold up. Where this one is extra remarkable, for the back folds up to 6 meters into the air. And very popular to take bikes with you is the slide or fold down. You might wonder what these two regular cars are doing here. Well, this is how they look when they're settled in. And of course you can use a fancy car to sleep on, but it's not necessary as you can see with this old East German Trabant. What struck me is the need that owners of vehicles apparently have to communicate on the outside of the vehicles. In dangerous countries you might become a target when they think you are driving a military vehicle. To prevent them from thinking that, you can paint your vehicle in an odd color. Or you can write on the front that you are an innocent tourist. Or you put up a sign, no military vehicles. With the risk of a direct hit because the villains couldn't read it. And if you think people might not be frightened enough by your vehicle itself, you can always put up this sign. Caution, stay 100 meters back or you will be shot. That might be a nice attempt to bluff your way out, but another option is keeping it simple. Like on the back of this truck. Speaking of signs, you can put up one that asks other not to hit their horn, because your vehicle is alt und langsam, old and slow. That's about the same as Stau ist hinten, vorne ist alles frei. Traffic jam is at the back, up front everything is clear. It's a way to tell something about your drive, much like Deutsches Kulturgut, German cultural heritage, or hand wash only, although the chances that someone goes at it with a flat iron are slim. And if you forgot to make a sign, you can always write the year of the build on the truck itself. That wraps up our stay at Willy's Fernreisemobiltreffen. I hope you liked it. Bye!